नमस्कार दोस्तों आज मैंने एक छोटी सी बात ऑब्जर्व करी हमारे घर के पास एक अंडर कंस्ट्रक्शन बिल्डिंग है एक हाउसिंग सोसाइटी नई बन रही है जिसमें हर दिन मैं देखती हूँ कि कुछ लेबरर्स काम करते हैं और उनके बच्चे जो हैं जो काम नहीं कर रहे हैं छोटे से बच्चे वो खेलते रहते हैं तो मैंने ये नोटिस किया कि ये बच्चे जो हैं हर दिन ट्रेन ट्रेन वाला गेम खेलते हैं यानी कि एक बच्चा बोगी बन जाता है एक बच्चा इंजन बन जाता है बहुत सारे बच्चे बोगी बन जाते हैं और वो गोल गोल ट्रेन ट्रेन पूछ करते रहते हैं आप लोगों ने भी शायद जब छोटे थे खेला होगा ये गेम मैंने भी खेला है उनमें से मैंने नोटिस किया है एक छोटा सा बच्चा जिसके पास शर्ट भी नहीं है सिर्फ एक छोटी सी चड्डी है और वो भी खेल रहा है गेम लेकिन वो हमेशा हमेशा ही बोगी बना रहा तो एक दिन मैंने सोचा मैं पूछ लूं और उस बच्चे को मैंने बुला लिया और बोला बेटा आप सिर्फ बोगी क्यों बनते हो आपको नहीं लगता कि एक दिन आप इंजन बनोगे तो तब उस बच्चे ने कहा मेरे पास तो शर्ट नहीं है तो ये जो दूसरे बच्चे हैं अगर मैं इंजन बनता हूँ आंटी तो ये क्या पकड़ेंगे इसीलिए मैं बोगी ही बना हूँ और मैं बहुत खुश हूँ तो उस दिन मैं 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 बस स्टंड रह गई और मैंने देखा कि भाई कैसा एटीट्यूड है बच्चे का वो थैंकफुल है कि वो खेल पा रहा है उन दूसरे बच्चों के लिए और उन दूसरे बच्चों के साथ सो एटीट्यूड इज ग्रैटिट्यूड ग्रैटिट्यूड आल्सो इज अ ग्रेट एटीट्यूड सो मुझे ये बहुत सिखाया इस बच्चे ने तो हम कितना एटीट्यूड है हम में और हम लोग क्या ग्रैटिट्यूड दिखाते हैं हर दिन और अगर दिखाते हैं तो कैसे दिखाते हैं आप कैसे आ, आपका ग्रैटिट्यूड दिखाते हो आपका एटीट्यूड क्या है क्या आपका एटीट्यूड पॉजिटिव है और आप बहुत सारा ग्रैटिट्यूड दिखाते हो हर दिन जो भी आपके सामने आए जिससे भी मिलो आप, आप उनसे ग्रैटिट्यूड के साथ बात करते हो एक पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड के साथ बात करते हो मैं खुद क्या ये चीज़ करती हूँ क्या मैं प्रैक्टिस करती हूँ दीज आर थाट्स दैट ऑल ऑफ अस हैव टू एक्चुअली थिंक अबाउट सो यस ग्रैटिट्यूड इज़ अ ग्रेट एटीट्यूड सो हैव अ वंडरफुल डे अहेड विद अ पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड एंड विद ग्रैटिट्यूड बाय हेलो वेलकम बैक टू स्टोरीज विद कोच सुजाता आई एम नॉट शेयरिंग अ स्टोरी टूडे आई actually just wanted to express my heartfelt gratitude at your support and continuous encouragement in making stories with coach sujata possible a lot of my students over all these years have been asking me to speak to share my experiences um either my experiences uh, of a corporate life and the learnings that i've had from there or the training programs that i have conducted or the training programs that i have taken also as a student as a participant or the books that i have read and that was the reason that stories with coach sujata was conceptualized and never in my wildest dreams did i think that in such a short period i would reach 400 subscriptions it would not have been possible without every single one of you constantly supporting me in this endeavor thank you so much for making this possible and i look forward to the time that all of us move together and learn much more from one another through stories with coach sujata do send in your comments do send in whatever stories you'd like to hear about do send in any particular training needs that you may have that i can actually convert into a story or into a video for you so that everyone is benefited out of this Thank you so much once again and till the next story do keep watching all the videos that i have shared so far on stories with coach sujata thank you god bless boon boon se sagar banta hai and i'm absolutely sure that every single subscription will push me gently nudge me in order to share much much more together we will rise thank you Hello and welcome back. Today I'll I'll tell you a, a life story. Um, 
I had gone to a recent uh, conference, a women's conference in which uh, we got to hear fascinating stories of uh, so many ladies who have made it very big, mothers who have made it very big in their individual fields. And I had the fortune, the good fortune of meeting one Miss Shelja Mittal. Now, Miss Shelja Mittal is the founder and president of Koala Cabs. Koala Cabs is a unique cab service that is provided by women uh, for women and children. So it was a wonderful concept and her story got me thinking. Her story, I mean, in her story, she says that, okay, there was this small problem that she had. The problem in which um, her child's cab driver did not come to pick her up. In fact, he sent another replacement uh, to pick up her child. And when she saw the replacement driver, she was not very convinced. She was not very happy. She did not feel safe. Hence, she dropped her child herself. So that was the problem statement that she worked on that made her develop a beautiful concept in which women from economically weaker classes would be uh, trained uh, to become cab drivers and they would be given the responsibility of picking up uh, little children from school and dropping them back home safely. So uh, like a kangaroo takes care of his children, uh, its children. I mean, the koala cabs, ladies take care of their uh, little babies that they pick up and drop. So that was a beautiful concept. And that also got me thinking. I mean, it, it, it made me a little guilty. I kept, I kept thinking, okay, I had this big list of things. So many things that I always wanted to do. I wanted to become a singer. Um, uh, I wanted to start my own band. Um, I wanted to get into su maybe fusion music. Um, I was interested in acting. There were so many other things that I wanted to do. But in the pace and the regular uh, maybe ebb and flow of life, so many of the, these things just, just got pushed into the background. So they started making me feel guilty, saying, okay, why have I been sitting on so many things? Why this procrastination? So coming to today's topic of procrastination. Procrastination is any one task, any one particular responsibility or dream or goal that we have been sitting on for a very long time, that we have been pushing, postponing, as we call it in Indian English, for a very long time. Maybe because it makes us very uncomfortable. Maybe because we have to break the regular mold uh, of, our, of, of our regular flow of life and maybe do something that's out of the box. Uh, fear of ridicule. What will people say? Sharma ji ki bivi kya kahengi? Ya you know, Mishra ji ki behen kya kahengi? Or log kya kahengi? Kind of a, a, a situation. It could be anything. So it could be fear of ridicule. It could be... Um, fear of the unknown, all of this. So how do we actually overcome such procrastination? So Brian Tracy, a Canadian-American author uh, that I have been following avidly for a very long time. I'm a great admirer of his works. He came up with a very simple concept. Mark Twain had once said, if the first thing that you do on any given day is eat a live frog, that will give you a deep satisfaction that nothing worse can happen to your life. So he said, eat that frog. So Brian Tracy institutionalized that, made, made that a life's lesson and said, okay, now eat that frog every day, build that habit. So what is this frog? The frog is that one thing that we have been pushing away, that one thing that we've been sitting on for a very long time, that we haven't done, that big, important part, critical part of our to-do lists, of our lives, of our ambitious uh, checklists that we have just not done anything about, maybe for various reasons. So what does Brian Tracy actually want us to do? He says, man up, take a big gulp of water, be prepared for it, just grab the frog and gulp it down. And if you're able to actually do that one thing, which is eat that green slimy frog early in the day it will give you such energy that your day will just go by extremely productively i mean you won't stop throughout the day because it would have given you so much positive energy so eating that frog could be anything in your checklist that you have been pushing for a long time so it could be uh, maybe keeping that, uh, that uh, keeping up to that date night that you wanted to have with your partner 
and you haven't been able to for so many other reasons, domestic reasons. It could be uh, going for a jog every day, a five minute jog that you've been actually pushing under the carpet or, or just lying about. It could be uh, it could be changing one thing um, in your life uh, to accommodate maybe your child a little more in your schedule, something that you have always wanted to, but just did not feel like doing. Or it could be just apologizing to that one person who was once upon a time a very close friend, but you fell out due, due to maybe a small ego clash or a skirmish. So it could be anything. If we're able to eat that frog, it, it'll change our lives. So just try that. So what are you expected to do? You're expected to come up with a checklist of all the things that you wanted to do. Your to-do list. And then you're supposed to identify your frog. That one thing that's the most difficult for you to do. The most uncomfortable for you to do. And eat that first. In preparation for it, there are many things that you could do. The frog can then be actually maybe made into smaller pieces, which means that one big task of, okay, I will make up with my in-laws can be broken down into three or four steps. The first step being, okay, let me give them a call every day. That can be the first step. The second step, all right, maybe 15 days from now, let me go and visit them once. The third could be, but the third could be, all right, now that I've spoken to my mother-in-law and she looks a little okay and she's a little more comfortable uh, in the conversation that I'm having with her, maybe I could now initiate that conversation with my father-in-law, which is the third step. So it does not have to be that, that mountain or it does not have to be that big, um, unchewable, uh, you know, uh, un unchewable bite of food that is stuck in our... Uh, in our glottis, it could be chopped down into smaller pieces. You can make it into smaller tasks that you can start working on. So eating that frog will give me a lot of energy. For me, an example of eating the frog is actually starting this channel. I've wanted to start this channel for the last 10 years. So I finally took the plunge and ate the frog. So how many frogs are there in your life? And when will you start eating one? Do subscribe, like, and comment, share and support my channel. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, productive day and eat that frog. Good morning. Welcome back to my channel, Stories with Coach Sujata. A farmer put up a board saying puppies for sale and a little boy went to see whether he can buy a puppy for himself. He could buy a puppy for himself. Now, when he went to the farmer and asked him, Mister, how much do you think you're going to sell the puppies for? The farmer said, Anywhere between 30 and $50, the little boy was a little disappointed and said, you know what, I have only $2.37. Can I still try, please? Now the farmer, being a kind-hearted man, said, okay, let me show you the puppies and you decide. And he whistled. He whistled and his dog, Lady, came out with her five little fur balls. I love puppies, don't you? And when uh, the little boy closely observed the five puppies, he quickly zeroed in on one of them and said, hey, what happened to this one? The farmer said, um, now this one doesn't have a hip socket, was born without a hip socket. So I'm sorry, little boy, but he's going to limp for the whole of his life. He will not be able to jump and play. So I don't think he's a good choice. Now the little boy was a little offended, but still said no. But I like him. I think I'm going to take him. I'll give you all the money I have, $2.37. The farmer was confused. He said, little boy, I don't think it's a good decision. It's not a wise decision. Now this little puppy will not be able to jump and play with you. He will grow up with a lifelong limb. Why do you want to go ahead and buy him? In fact, I'm going to give him to you free of cost. Now this little boy with tears in his eyes said, Hey, mister, I don't think I want to take this for free. This little puppy is as good or even better than all these puppies. In fact, he's the one that I actually want. And with that, he showed the farmer his own left leg 
that was badly crippled. He lifted up his pant sleeve and showed the farmer a very badly mangled left leg. And he said, when this puppy grows up and he's not able to play and run like the others, he will need someone to understand him. And who better than me? We'll be good for each other. So with this story, what I have been able to take back is that each of us is beautiful because of our flaws. We are flawed, imperfect, and in these flaws, in these imperfections, is our beauty. Each of us is special. A lot of parents I've come across when I counsel say, okay, my younger son is, is slower than my elder son, or my daughter doesn't paint as well as my son, or no, many of these other things where they compare one child with the other child and think that one of their children has a deficit as compared to maybe the neighbor's child or someone else. That's when I tell them the story and say, each one of us has a speciality, has a strength. In the flaw that the Almighty created, he gave you a great strength that you could actually use that could be beneficial, could be useful throughout your life. So let's remember this. Hello, welcome back to my channel, Stories with Coach Sujata. The intention behind this channel, the vision behind this channel was to create a platform for me to be able to share all those lessons that I have learned over all these years. Lessons that I have learned as a corporate professional, as a leadership trainer, as a coach, uh, as a performance coach, as a life coach, uh, also as a facilitator, as a mom of three children, wonderful children, as a wife, as a daughter, and as a member of this society. So this is why I actually started this channel for me to be able to tell stories that made an impact on me and share lots of corporate tips, tricks, lessons learned and failures. I intend to motivate many others just like me that everything is absolutely fine. We can move ahead. So while I was doing this, I've had a lot of support from all of you as my audience, as my subscribers. I've also received a lot of requests. Uh, requests for me to speak other languages, for me to share the same stories in other, the other languages. So without much ado, I'd like to give you a big surprise today. This is my first story, um, not a story, actually a, a small uh, nugget of information and knowledge that I will be sharing with you in Telugu. Yes, you're right, in Telugu. So Manamu Ivala, Ival Ninchi, Nenu Koni Koni na videos e de Tianukunano, our videos, Nen Telugu Gura share chestano, Ad say, Mene Yebhi Sochrakha, Kemene Sankal Plia, Keme Hindi, maybe Alagalag videos Banangi, Ab Kitne Banangi, Kya Banangi, Voto, Voto Sameke Sabse, Ab Kudi de Kingi. So without much of a delay, my first video in Telugu for all of you. Goals. Goals and Edmir Vine under. Laksham. Mana chinna puru, mana students gaona puru, mana amma nana, imat adi kuntar manali. Yeh vanch ein cheda on kuntna ono life lo. Pedavad veya ka yeh mauda on kuntna. Ani question chala mande adi kuntar, parents adi kuntar. Manang guda manalo kandre mo thakke ni ah ni doctor hota, ni engineer hota, ni lawyer hota, ni no chiranji vilanti varna hota. Ilaga chala mande je puntaru. Kani chala mandi manalo chala mandi. A particular question ki answer evil like a good boy under yen the kandi maniki lakshal and the important life low goals and even the important yes maniki goals and the important if we don't have a goal and a maniki jivitan loka lakshan ledu ante mana actually and a rati repadukune mundu mana main jesa vivala mana laksha inti val rose ki mana laksha ni mana actually sadin chikaligama leda and a question in my answer chay like about them ala answer chay in a puru oka chinna dissatisfaction are in an angels in our life to an a question rather to an a chinna dissatisfaction rather to ala anti dissatisfaction edhi lekunda maniki jivitan lo vere vere rakala lakshala tapakunda on dali goals tapakunda on dali goals and a year 20 year 20 type of goals on thy life lo yelanti goals on thy goals and a v performance goals are yundachu 
లైఫ్ గోల్స్ అయి ఉండొచ్చు ఫైనాన్షియల్ గోల్స్ అయి ఉండొచ్చు అంటే పలానా టైమ్ కి నేను ఇంత పెద్ద ఇల్లు కొంటాను ఇంత ఇంత టర్న్ ఓవర్ నా బిజినెస్ కి ఉండాలి ఇంత రెవెన్యూ నా బిజినెస్ కి ఉంటుంది అలాంటి బిజినెస్ గోల్స్ అయి ఉండొచ్చు హెల్త్ గోల్స్ హెల్త్ అండ్ ఫిట్నెస్ గోల్స్ అయి ఉండొచ్చు ఏదైనా గోల్ అయి ఉండొచ్చు ఏదైనా ఈ పర్టికులర్ లక్ష్యానికి పర్పస్ ఏంటి మనం ఒక పర్టికులర్ ఐడియా తోటి ముందుకి నడవడమే ఈ ఈ లక్ష్యం మనకి హెల్ప్ చేస్తుంది మనకి ముందుకి నడవడానికి ఈ లక్ష్యం మనకి హెల్ప్ చేస్తుంది సో మనకి ఒక గోల్ అనేది తప్పకుండా అవసరం ఎటువంటి గోల్ అనేది అది మీరే డిసైడ్ చేసుకోవాలి ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ గోల్స్ ఉండొచ్చు సో వేరియస్ గోల్స్ గురించి మాట్లాడాం కదా సో ఈ గోల్స్ ని మనము ఎలా రాసుకోవాలి ఎలా అనుకోవాలి చాలా మంది అంటారు మేడం వాట్ ఈస్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ అ డ్రీమ్ అండ్ అ గోల్ అని నాకు బోల్డ్ అంబిషన్స్ ఉన్నాయి నా గురించి నేను గొప్ప గొప్పగా అనుకుంటాను బోల్డ్ ఆలోచనలు ఉన్నాయి నాకు డ్రీమ్స్ ఉన్నాయి నేను అప్పుడు వాళ్ళకి చెప్పేది ఒకటే డ్రీమ్ అనేది మనం మన మనసులో చూస్తాము మన గుండెతోటి ఆలోచిస్తాము మన గుండెతో అనుకుంటాము మనం ఇలా అయితే బాగుండు నేను పెద్ద సింగర్ అయితే బాగుండు నేను బాలు గారిలాగా పాట పాడగలిగితే ఎంతో గొప్పగా ఉంటుంది నేను అలా పాడతాను అని అనుకోవచ్చు మనం కానీ అది ఎలా సాధిస్తాము ఎటువంటి ప్లాన్ తయారు చేస్తాము నేను తయారు చేసే ప్లాన్ ఈ ప్లాన్ బట్టి నేను అలా బాలు గారి అంత పెద్ద సింగర్ ని అవ్వగలను అని మనం ఎప్పుడైతే రాసుకుంటామో వీటిలన్నిటినీ కరెక్ట్ గా ప్రిపేర్ అయ్యి ఒక ప్లాన్ తయారు చేస్తాము ఒక బ్లూ ప్రింట్ తయారు చేస్తాము దాన్ని ఏమంటారు లక్ష్యం స్మార్ట్ గోల్ సెట్టింగ్ అంటారు ఇంటెలిజెంట్ గా సైంటిఫిక్ గా గోల్ సెట్టింగ్ అంటారు సో ఇప్పుడు మనం చూద్దాం ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ఒక మెథడ్ ఉందండి ఒక గ్లోబలీ ఫాలోడ్ మెథడ్ ఉంది ఇది మీరు అందరూ వినుండొచ్చు అంటే ఇట్స్ అ మోడల్ అ బిజినెస్ మోడల్ ఇట్స్ అ టూల్ అ టెక్నిక్ అంటారు దాన్ని స్మార్ట్ అంటారు అనమాట స్మార్ట్ గోల్ సెట్టింగ్ అంటే స్మార్ట్ అంటే ఏంటి స్మార్ట్ అంటే ఒక చిన్న ఫుల్ ఫామ్ ఈ అబ్బాయి చాలా స్మార్ట్ గా ఉన్నాడు అలాంటి స్మార్ట్ కాదు ఒక ఫుల్ ఫామ్ అనమాట ఏబిసిడిఈఎఫ్ అంటే ఒక ఫుల్ ఫామ్ అన్నట్టుగా స్మార్ట్ స్మార్ట్ లో ఎస్ ఉంది కదా ఎస్ అంటే ఏంటి S for specific. Specific అంటే చాలా క్లియర్ గా విడమర్చి నేను ఇలా అవ్వాలి అనుకుంటున్నాను నేను పెద్ద అయ్యాక ఇది అవుతాను అని చెప్పి మనం ఎంత క్లియర్ గా రాసుకుంటే మళ్ళీ ఇంకొక టిప్ రాసుకోకపోతే మనకి గోల్ అచీవ్మెంట్ లో కొంచెం కష్టం అవుతుంది ఎందుకు అంటే మనం ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ఏంటి అనుకోవాలి ఏంటి అవ్వాలి అని మనం సరిగ్గా రాసుకోకపోతే మనకు ఆ క్లారిటీ ఉండదు ఎంత క్లియర్ గా గోల్ ని మనం క్లియర్ గా ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ చేసి డిస్క్రైబ్ చేసి రాసుకుంటే అంత స్మార్ట్ మన గోల్ సెట్టింగ్ అవుతుంది సో స్పెసిఫిక్ గా రాసుకోవాలి ఐ వాంట్ టు బికమ్ సో అండ్ సో ఐ వాంట్ టు బికమ్ అ డాక్టర్ ఐ వాంట్ టు బికమ్ అ గైనకాలజిస్ట్ అనేది ఒక స్పెసిఫిక్ గోల్ అనమాట సో వాట్ ఆర్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ స్మార్ట్ లో ఎస్ అంటే స్పెసిఫిక్ ఇవాళ క్లాస్ ఇంతే ఎస్ స్పెసిఫిక్ గుర్తుంచుకోండి ప్లీజ్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ ఆల్ ద తెలుగు పీపుల్ ఆల్సో ప్లీజ్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ టు దిస్ ఛానల్ టేక్ కేర్ బాయ్ బాయ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ So it's almost the 8th day of the lockdown and many of us are living in these pressure cooker conditions with lots of people around us. Um, many of us may be a little irritated that we are not getting our personal space. And what happens usually when we are irritated is something that all of us know, even me. So uh, this is a beautiful story, a story of uh, a father and a son. The son is just 7 years old, he's a little boy and he has a massive temper. is a really bad temper terrible temper so the the father tries an experiment with the son he takes him to a fence the houses have fences um aise jo deware hoti hain jo picket fences kehte hain i'm not sure what it's called in hindi but uh, the father takes him to a fence and gives him a sack of uh, nails a small bag uh, of nails and a hammer यानी कि उसे हथौड़ा और कील इतने इतना एक गुच्छा दे देते हैं पापा उसको एंड uh, पापा कहते हैं कि अच्छा जब भी तुम्हें गुस्सा आएगा तो कुछ मत करना बस जाके एक कील ठोक देना इस uh, एक कील मार देना इस फेंस पे सो so, बच्चा सोचता है अच्छा ये क्या अजीब रिक्वेस्ट है पापा का फिर भी 
वो कहता है ओके पापा मैं कर दूंगा एंड एवरी डे ही गोज एंड 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 डज एग्जैक्टली दैट वेर एवर ही गेट्स एंग्री ही गोज अड एंड ही स्टार्ट हैमरिंग वन नेल इन टू द वॉल ही सरप्राइज दैट इन द फर्स्ट वीक इट सेल्फ ही हैज हैमर हंड एंड फिफ्टी नेल्स एंड कील मारना एक दीवार पे एक फेंस पे काफ़ी मुश्किल काम है एक सात साल के बच्चे के लिए पहले तो काफ़ी मज़ा आ रहा था उसको लेकिन मुश्किल बढ़ती जा रही थी कि भाई इतनी मुश्किल इतना मुश्किल काम है जब भी नाराज़ होता हूँ मुझे जाके एक कील मारना पड़ता है तो उसकी वजह से बच्चा अपना जो ये जो गुस्सा है वो कंट्रोल करने लगा ही स्टार्ट इट कंट्रोलिंग हिज एंगर फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम and he was delighted when the number of nails that he had to actually uh, drill into the wall or hammer into the wall started dwindling they started coming down so kam hote gaye jo bhi keel marne the fence mein kafi kam hote gaye finally ek din aisa aaya jab bacche nu bacche ne ek bhi keel nahi mara fence pe to bada khush ho gaya bachcha he was extremely excited and he went running to his father his father was a carpenter went running to him and said papa dekho ek bhi keel nahi mara aaj mere deewar mein aap khush ho mere liye papa ne kaha ba beta wah that is wonderful news you've given me such wonderful news and i've been waiting for that day and bacche ko leke gaye aur bahut sara ice cream khilaya us din bachcha bada khush ho gaya and tab papa ne kaha ki ab tumhare liye aur ek kaam hai jis jis din tumhe lagta hai ki tumhe bilkul gussa nahi aaya उस दिन तुम दीवार से पांच कील निकाल दोगे यू विल रिमूव फाइव नेल्स फ्रॉम द फेंस ऑन एनी डे दैट यू थिंक यू हैव नॉट लॉस्ट योर टेम्पर सो नाउ द चाइल्ड सेज ओके नाउ द गेम कंटिन्यूज एंड ही कंटिन्यू डूइंग दैट ही केप्ट रिमूविंग द फाइव नेल्स फ्रॉम द फेंस एवरी डे दैट ही वॉज नॉट गेटिंग एंग्री सो फाइनली देर वॉज अ फेंस that was absolutely devoid of nails no nails on the fence and that day the father and the son went and stood in front of the fence and the father said what do you see son tumhe kya dikhta hai the son said i see holes i see lots and lots of holes in the fence mujhe deewar pe bahut sare chhed dikhte hain sirf chhed and then the father said so for every time that you lost your temper and used some words or said something to people that left a wound these holes are symbolic of the wound that you have actually left on the person that you were speaking to when you are in a temper the hurtful words that you have said can never be changed you can keep apologizing throughout your life but you won't be able to change the fact that you actually used the words in the first place you know at the, at the uh i need to confess i do that too i used to do that much more but now i have decreased that periodicity i have tried of course all of us are human we may still burst out once in a while maybe once in a blue moon but then that doesn't mean that we've not used any hurtful words that we have made it all better for the person after we have apologized because that hole stays the scar stays we may mend it with a lot of love and affection but the scar that we have actually left continues staying there right there so what are the steps that i take i can i can only talk about myself the steps that i take now when i get really angry is i just don't say anything for some time i express to the person that i am getting a little upset by this i am angry by this and i walk away from the situation so the first step that i i i follow now is i walk away from the situation give it some time when i'm in a better perspective and i'm actually thinking i'm able to think about the pros and cons what i may have thought what the other person may have thought i come back and say okay now i'm i'm ready to discuss this so that's what i do it works really well for me because at least i have not said anything hurtful to the other person and I'm happy that uh, my family members, my friends and colleagues who actually know me for a very long time find that that may be beneficial for them and they have started using it too. So the next time that you're in a really angry mood, you're getting into that temper of yours, you know your symptoms. Your nose may become red, 
um, you may feel okay now is when I'm going to say everything I want to say just hold your horses just say okay 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 hang on hold it and say okay let me just deep breathe or walk away from the situation tell the person I'm not in the right mood right now can I just come back to you in five minutes and walk away from the situation without causing hurt so that worked for me my friends I hope that works for you and if you think that you have any other coping mechanism any other mechanism that helps you overcome a temper overcome any anger especially during the lockdown because we're in a closed environment tempers are bound to fly but we also know the reason for these tempers so let's try and understand that and overcome the situation successfully so if you find that you have your own coping mechanism please write to me i'll be more than happy to discuss this with you because i may learn from you as well so please subscribe like share make me a little famous if not very famous let's go viral with this okay and let's hold those horses all right have a wonderful wonderful day ahead long live bye bye hello and welcome back on the day of the janta curfew today the curfew and the solidarity shown by the whole of india 1.4 billion people almost got me thinking of certain things of how we react to adversity so there's this story in which a daughter comes to a father a middle aged daughter comes to a father and she's lamenting about all the problems in her life she keeps crying about everything that's not happening well and she keeps saying okay i don't deserve this i deserve a better life i deserve a better future what's happening around me why and she keeps bemoaning and lamenting what's happening so the father a chef takes her into the kitchen and in the kitchen there are three identical pots that are set on the stove with boiling water once the water boils without speaking anything the father puts potatoes in one pot allows it to boil he puts uh, uh, he puts uh, some coffee beans uh, in another pot and the third pot he puts boiled uh, sorry raw eggs and he doesn't say anything and he's all mystic and the daughter is getting more and more impatient saying i've come to you for advice i you know there are so many bad things happening in my life and you're not giving me a solution what are you doing the father just says just give me some time have some patience and after a particular period of time he switches the stove off and then he takes out these various products that he had put into the pots and from one pot come out the potatoes he puts them into a dish from one pot come out the eggs he puts them into another dish and the third dish he brings out the coffee beans and then with the water in the third pot he makes her two mugs her and himself two mugs of steaming hot coffee now the coffee with the creamer and the sugar makes the daughter smile and then he says okay what do you see now the impatient daughter says what did i see i just see potatoes eggs and uh, and coffee beans what else should i see the father says look closer what do you see examine the products that have come out of three identical hot water pots So then the the daughter says okay let me give my father the benefit of doubt he's seen so much of life and she touches the potatoes she's surprised to see that the potatoes are very soft and very mushy weak she sees the eggs the eggs are hard boiled so they're really tough and strong and the the coffee beans are just the same nothing much happens to the coffee beans but then what the coffee beans have done instead is they have actually given their flavor to the water around them the steaming hot water around them and made them wonderful coffee tasty coffee so the father says what is it that you understand from this and then he smiles and 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 gives his daughter a, a wonderful piece of advice he says adversity is the same for all of us it's what we do with the adversity that makes us who we are so adversity can either make you soft weak mushy like the potatoes which actually went into the water very hard or adversity can make you hard can toughen you can strengthen you like the eggs 
The eggs are very delicate when they're put into hot water. But once they boil, they toughen up, they become stronger and their texture changes. And so, but then the coffee beans are unique. The coffee beans actually change the flavor of the environment around them. They give us hot cups of steaming coffee. So what is it that we actually learn from this? We learn that adversity is the same. It is our response, our reaction to the adversity that changes us, that makes us who we are, that builds up our future. So in today's tough times, the adversity is the same world over. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to get stuck with the solution? With, with finding the problem, with, with building up different problems in front of us and crying and bemoaning our life, lamenting about all those things that we have not done? Or are we going to look inwards? Are we going to look inwards and toughen ourselves, strengthen ourselves? Think of ways and means to build our own immunity, to build our society, to build the community, to clean up the community, to cleanse everything around us. What is it that we are planning to do with this adversity? Because the pots are the same. The water is the same. It's the product that goes inside and changes the environment that actually is the best, is the toughest. So with this, I'd like to leave you a little earlier today just to think of how you want to respond to this particular adversity. Do you want to look inwards and cleanse? move towards a better future or do you want to become soft, mushy and easily pliable like the potatoes? I hope you've heard and understood something from this story just like I have understood so many things because I'd like to practice being the coffee bean. What about you? Have a wonderful day. Please continue with your solidarity, expressing solidarity for the Janta curfew. There may be more days like this Continue with the same vigor as you have today. Jai Hind. Take care. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Good morning. Welcome back to Stories with Coach Sujata. The incident that I'd like to share with you actually happened and I was witness to it. And this is something that I will never forget. So I thought I'll share it with all of you. Um, I was a voice coach with a banking process. Uh, a bank had given us their business. And a part of the banking process uh, was that the executives of our uh, organization would have to call customers whose account has been inactive for a period of time. So their job was to call the customer, inquire as to whether the customer is facing any issues and why he has not transacted in the bank for a while and help him or her uh, come back and start transacting so that the account can become active again and we can retain that client. So there was uh, this executive, uh, she was almost at the end of her shift. Uh, we had eight hour shifts and so it was almost seven, seven and a half hours through her shift. And this was almost, I think, her last call that she had to make. Uh, she made a call uh, and uh, I heard the recording because as a voice coach, I had to also listen to, uh, to and monitor calls and provide feedback as to how uh, the executive has actually taken the call, what was the call quality like. So I was listening and this girl called up uh, a lady customer. Um, I remember her name, Betty Nielsen, Mrs. Betty Nielsen. And when she called, she made the call. Uh, the call was answered by a very old gentleman an aged gentleman we could uh, we could decipher that we could actually understand that by his voice and the gentleman uh, sounded very dull sounded a little vacant and this girl started with her routine procedure saying hello uh, good morning is this mrs uh, betty nielsen am i speaking with mrs betty nielsen and uh, uh, she started with the routine you know calling script saying I have noticed that uh, I'm calling from such and such a bank. Uh, we have noticed that the account is inactive. Is there anything that we can help you uh, in order to make the account active? So she was saying what she had to say. The other gentleman was silent for a while. And then when he spoke, uh, what he said was, um, I'm so, so sorry, uh, but uh, Mrs. Betty Nielsen has passed. And there was a silence again 
um, and then he said all that I have for company now uh, is just me and my dog Molly and then the executive responded and said I'm so sorry about your dog and then we could hear the click and the line got disconnected I'll tell you what happened first in terms of uh, the impact on the business um, the customer disconnected um, he, he was traumatized um, and very silently you know he, he went to the bank he closed his wife's account because she was deceased and he closed his account too his family members asked him why he has closed the account you know his account which was active and then he narrated this to them in a very disturbed mental state and uh, the children did not take it so lightly his children they sued the bank the bank took back the process this was an outsourced process so the bank took back all its business from the company that I was working in at that point that is the business impact but the learning from it that we actually get is that selective listening can be very dangerous it can be fatal sometimes and that's the first learning selective listening is not good second when you are not completely mentally present or attentive you should never cater to a customer you should never cater to even a, a, a family member in a relationship if you're not there you're not physically and mentally present you should not get into a conversation you should take some time come back be actually present mentally and only then speak because God knows what you will say and how that will affect your relationship and when in doubt do not assume you may make an ass of you and me instead when in doubt ask confirm only then speak so this was a lesson my friends that that has stayed with me for all these years and I'm hoping that you will also find it beneficial you will also find you know that uh, there is some learning in this and you'd like to actually apply this to life so are you all listening to me or just hearing me if you're listening to me and your mind is registering all of this and you really like what you're hearing please I have much more to share with you 21 years of corporate experience that I would love to share so please like share subscribe to my channel stories with coach Sujata till then bye bye hello welcome back today's story goes back almost 20 years two decades back a story that I heard from my own master trainer and I would love to share it today uh, the story is the story of two woodcutters let's name them Peter and Paul we can also name them Ram and Sham whatever you you know whatever two names come to your mind now these two woodcutters or lumberjacks as we call them were friends but then more importantly they were competitors so both of them felt that uh, they were the better lumberjack or the better woodcutter so one day they brought it this uh, they brought this problem out into the open this bone of contention that they had and said okay let's have a competition let's go into the jungle and start sawing trees or axing trees we'll see by the end of the day Whoever has produced the maximum timber will be the winner. So it was a fair enough contest. And they had two identical axes. So dono ke paas, uh, identical kulhariyan thi. So then they thought, all right, let's get into the forest. And they started working. Now while they were axing, Peter thought, okay, I will not take a break. Come what may, I'll continue axing and axing and axing, sawing and sawing and sawing as if you know there's no tomorrow and he continued so the sound of lumber getting created trees getting chopped was continuously heard 
and both woodcutters were very competitive so they continued at it so while peter was axing these trees and while he was chopping down wood he could actually realize that the sound of the other person who's paul chopping the trees would keep stopping for around 10 to 15 minutes after every two hours so that made peter feel very good he said okay now this guy is getting tired paul is getting tired so it's my chance i'll win today and without without stopping peter continued he continued sawing and sawing axing and axing while he was axing his axe started becoming really blunt so his quality of work was getting affected but he didn't stop he said no that's okay let's do this i can do this at least i'm not stopping and i'm continuing so at the end of the day who do you think won the contest okay I've, i i also thought that it was peter but then i was stunned when my trainer told me that paul had won the contest why do you think he won the contest yes because paul was taking planned breaks of 10 to 15 minutes after every interval and sharpening his saw yes what does sharpening the saw mean sharpening the saw was a mind blowing pioneering concept idea that was actually given by Stephen Covey Stephen R Covey the great management guru and by sharpening the saw he meant that we need to constantly upgrade our skills upgrade our existing knowledge now why do we need to do that we're already experts in our field many of us are experts in our field we may just feel content and say okay fine do i need to actually sharpen my saw i'm good at whatever i do people actually have to come to me and learn from me no <laughs> why is that because we become as outdated as ms dos we could, we become as outdated as these softwares that have gone completely out of business so instead of being updated outdated i'm sorry outdated what is it that we can actually do we can start working on four different factors that govern our personal productivity these four different factors that are responsible for our personal productivity would be p which is physical the physical aspect of our body our personality s which would be the social aspect of our personality or emotional aspect of our personality if we may call it m which is the mental well-being the mental aspect that governs the way that we actually shape ourselves and how we behave on a day-to-day -day basis and finally the other s which is the spiritual aspect of our personality so what do i mean by physical aspect i mean if we don't take a break our body actually starts getting burnt out and we face burnout we don't feel motivated enough to get through the activities of the day our regular activities of the day so physical exercise taking some time off to just maybe go to the gym uh, take care of our diet our health all of these come under the physical aspect of our personality and then we move on to the social aspect no man is an island so in order to actually feel good about oneself we need to be constantly in touch with our friends and family we need to ensure that they know that we are around and we know that they are around we feel really self assured we feel better we feel special these are the loved ones that we're talking about that are, and the friends the colleagues the social network so that's the s aspect and then we move forward to the other aspect that we're talking about the mental well-being so mental well-being keeping our mind sharp keeping ourselves relevant reading ensuring that this golden habit this wonderful habit of reading doesn't get left out in the hurry of life in the bustle of life and then moving forward to our spiritual which is maybe meditating thinking of one div divine self who's up above there and who actually gave us who we are and made us who we are today so all of these help us to sharpen our saw and make us who we are and make us even better every day being better every day should be our motto and that's that's what my motto is today because at times 
when when i feel okay this is it i can't do more i can't just pull this weight of being a homemaker you know being responsible for home for family for uh, for loved ones uh, for being a professional so many other things and that's when I, i i say hey let me just sit down with a nice hot cup of tea or coffee coffee is my favorite filter coffee and maybe read a good book i may not be able to read the complete 400 page book but one chapter will help me sharpen my saw so i hope this brilliant concept which is very relevant as relevant as it was maybe 100 years to as relevant as it today maybe this particular concept will also will also give you some learning today so have a wonderful day ahead please like please subscribe i'm still trying to figure out so many details of videos of lighting of camera and i may be saying something more than i should have said because i don't have a standard script but please do subscribe and encourage me to do better thank you and have a wonderful day sharpening your saw bye bye hello and welcome back to stories with coach sujata are the emails in your uh, in your ms outlook giving you a lot of stress all those unread emails emails that you have not attended to maybe because you have so many more emails that keep pile, piling up all the time so do you know that uh, we on an average spend one third of our productive day at work on email management So if I were to tell you that there is a rule a golden rule that will help you manage emails better will you be happy will you apply it so let's see the four d's of email management the first d is do it any particular email you know i'm sure you have a particular slot in the day that you uh, factor in for email management now in that slot the minute you open up your inbox if you a certain if you open every single email and check which of these emails can be done within 5 minutes and you start doing one after the other automatically you start feeling more and more positive more and more productive less less stressed so do it is the rule for any email that you will be able to action within 5 minutes or a little less than 5 minutes so that's the first do it second If you if you know that that particular activity may require you half an hour 45 minutes an hour or two or maybe it's a big project it will need much more time defer it it is important and it is essential that you defer certain activities because you're doing everything else you're completing everything else and you're creating that space within your work day in order to do that particular important project so defer it label it put it in the right subfolder now wait if you don't have a subfolder that's not really smart you have to start creating subfolders in your email inbox right so the second one is defer it if it's not absolutely urgent and important doesn't have to be done right away then defer it okay put a label to it get back to it in at another particular time that you have factored for it specifically okay so first do it second defer it third delegate it if it's not your job to answer that particular email if it's your team member's job if it's someone else's duty to actually answer the email or someone has sent you a message asking you for a reference or a recommendation and um, that belongs to someone else's department you need to delegate it you need to send the email to someone else ask them to take care of it and you're done you have closed that particular email you have actioned it beautifully so the third d is delegate it finally the fourth d is delete it decluttering your inbox is absolutely mandatory for peace of mind for you to feel good for you to feel productive you need to be able to delete all those messages that don't belong to you or should not be there in the in the first instance so that would mean unsubscribing to all those unproductive uh, emails that you receive all the junk all the spam and believe me it will take you a little time in the beginning initially but then once you action it you will feel really good because automatically you will get much lesser spam in your inbox so that's what we're doing is we are deleting it and we are done we can sleep happy and easy and knowing 
that we have actually done a great job at email management so that is smart email management for you the 4d's okay if you like what you see please subscribe for more and more lovely short nuggets of stories and experiences and what works in training tips and tricks bye bye see you hello and welcome back to my small channel youtube channel in which i have made a small effort to share whatever i have understood what i have uh, ever i have learned through various stories through various trainings coaching sessions and through life itself through the kind of experiences that i've had in life itself thank you for liking sharing and subscribing to my channel so without much ado i'll go straight into this story today's story is about a kind hearted man and a butterfly ek titli aur ek acche aadmi acche insaan ki kahani hai aaj so there was this very kind hearted wonderful man warm man who happened to be in the garden one day now in the garden he was seeing all the flora and fauna the beautiful trees the uh, the plants the beautiful flowers and in one of these plants he saw a cocoon a small cocoon a butterfly's cocoon a cocoon um, i was looking up uh, what a cocoon means in the dictionary in the hindi dictionary it is suraksha uh, suraksha kshetra or it is also called cocoon so wo aadmi jo tha usne ek cocoon dekha o cocoon mein there was this butterfly this little butterfly that was struggling to get out of the cocoon now that is quite a process the butterfly has to tear the layers of the cocoon the pr protective layers of the cocoon and then spread its wings slowly ek stage se dusre stage mein jaane ke liye actually butterfly hone ke liye the butterfly has to actually go through the struggle and tear the cocoon so this man was fascinated and he sat down to watch the butterfly he could see that the butterfly was struggling a lot and it would continuously struggle to tear a little bit of the cocoon a little bit of the cocoon and then it would stop and after a while he noticed that it stopped struggling it was taking a breath it stopped struggling so at that point in time this man being kind hearted and saying okay let me do something to help this poor creature let me support this poor creature he went ahead he got a pair of scissors and he cut open the rest of the cocoon he tore it open for the butterfly and he was very happy with what he had done now this butterfly came out in a very odd shape the butterfly had a heavy torso yani ki body uska thoda heavy tha fluid se bhara, se bhara hua tha but its wings were very underdeveloped aise bilkul hi aise murjhaye hue aise shriveled wings the is butterfly ke now this man sat down usne socha ha gradually dekhunga main ab to iske wings develop honge maine isko help kiya hai lekin usko ye pata chala ek ghanta do ghante ho gaye lekin ye butterfly ke wings develop nahi hue the beautiful wings of the butterfly were still underdeveloped were not even developed at all they were still shriveled tab a, a thought struck him a thought needs to strike all of us in fact at that point in time that we don't meddle with nature nature god's forces have their own reason to do anything the process of evolution definitely requires struggle this struggle of the butterfly to get out of the cocoon to actually tear the cocoon open would have allowed this fluid to be pushed into the wings of the butterfly so that the wings could actually open up and instead of being shriveled and having this odd shape the butterfly had it been allowed to go through its own struggle would have developed these beautiful wings that would have helped it to fly off so ye ye ek cheez jo hai bahut important hai apni zindagi mein bhi struggling makes us stronger many a times a struggle can be very daunting hum log bahut hi overwhelmed ho jate hain kisi struggle ke uh, uh, ke beech mein 
किसी संघर्ष के बीच में हम ना बौखला जाते हैं हम सोचते हैं अब क्या अब ये हो गया अब मेरी जिंदगी अब अब, अब से खत्म हो गई मैं और नहीं स्ट्रगल कर सकता मुझसे और नहीं होगा बट एट दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम वी नीड टू सिट डाउन टेक अ डीप ब्रेथ टेल आवर सेल्व दैट स्ट्रगलिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई इज स्ट्रगलिंग इंपॉर्टेंट वेन वी स्ट्रगल एंड वी आर नॉट स्पून फेड कोई और हमें सपोर्ट करके कोई और हमें पूरे स्किल सेट्स प्रोवाइड करके प्रदान करके जब नहीं देता है तो हम खुद ही अपने बलबूते पे थ्रू आवर ओन एबिलिटीज जब हम एक रास्ता अपने लिए बनाते हैं दैट स्किल सेट और दो स्किल सेट्स दैट वी डेवलप एट दैट पॉइंट विल स्टे विद अस फॉर लाइफ विल मेक आवर ओन स्टोरी कंप्लीटली यूनिक We can actually take that into our parenting styles also. बहुत बार हम ये करते हैं often, very often हम ये करते हैं कि अपने जो बच्चे हैं अपने बच्चों को हम struggle नहीं करने देते बिल्कुल struggle नहीं करने देते We don't allow the child to struggle with maybe a concept of math. We don't allow the child to struggle with uh, developing a particular personality. We don't allow a child to struggle with uh, a with maybe certain interpersonal problems that he or she is facing in school or in society we don't allow the child that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, freedom to go ahead and make those mistakes and actually fail instead hum kya karte hain we create this safety net around a child a very very um इंट्रिकेट सेफ्टी नेट हम लोग ऐसा सेफ्टी नेट हमारे बच्चों के लिए क्रिएट कर देते हैं कि वी डू देम अ डिसर्विस वी डोंट एक्चुअली हेल्प देम क्रिएट देयर ओन स्किल सेट्स थ्रू देयर ओन स्ट्रगल सो मेनी टाइम्स दिस लीड्स टू लेजीनेस दिस लीड्स टू लेथार्जी दिस लीड्स टू अ लैक ऑफ मोटिवेशन इन अ चाइल्ड लाइफ सेंग वैसे भी मम्मी पापा को मेरे लिए सब कुछ कर ही देना है दे आर गोइंग टू हेल्प मी विथ दिस एक एंटाइटल्ड फीलिंग आ जाता है अपने बच्चों में बच्चों में ही क्यों हम में भी आ जाता है वी स्टार्ट बिकमिंग वेरी डिपेंडेंट ये डिपेंडेंट होना अच्छी बात नहीं है क्यों क्योंकि कभी ना कभी एक ऐसा सिचुएशन आता है जहां हमें भी अपने खुद के स्किल सेट्स डिस्प्ले करने पड़ते हैं एंड देन वी स्ट्रगल अलॉट हम बहुत स्ट्रगल होते हैं तो इसकी वजह से स्ट्रगल इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट लेट्स नॉट बिल्ड दैट सेफ्टी नेट लेट्स नॉट क्रिएट दैट कुशी फैक्टर अगर बच्चों को हम कुकिंग स्किल्स लाइफ स्किल्स फिनेंशियल स्किल्स नहीं सिखाएंगे तो हम सही नहीं कर रहे हैं एज पेरेंट्स सो रिमेंबर दिस टुडे स्ट्रगल गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू स्टोरीज विद गोड सुजाता टूडे स्टोरी इज द स्टोरी ऑफ अ चैम्पियन वीड फार्मर a farmer who was known throughout his province and all the districts around him for the kind of exceptional quality of wheat that he used to produce year after year now a wise lady went and met the farmer and she asked him what is the secret to this exceptional and consistent produce of wheat every year sir the farmer smiled and said ma'am after every harvest like any other farmer i segregate my best seed the best quality seed and you know then what i do i send this seed i distribute this seed a part of this seed with all my neighbors now the lady was surprised and she asked him how and and why sir these are all your competition these are all people who are actually competing with you every year to produce better wheat than you are then why are you doing this why are you sharing your best wheat with them and he said sir let's understand the nature of wheat and the produce i get a crop because of pollination and cross pollination now cross pollination happens when the wind carries the seed of wheat across various fields now the same wind carries seed from other fields to my field if all my neighbors had inferior quality of seed what is the guarantee that i'll be able to produce the best quality of wheat crop every year you tell me so in that way in order for me to be able to produce absolutely the best quality of seed that i can year after year consistently i need to be able to share 
my best seed with all my neighbors so there is a great model not just for form- farmers for all of us sorry i said farmers for all of us it is that if we have certain secrets trade secrets or best practices that we have been able to create after many years of trial and error as very experienced individuals many of us don't like sharing those best practices with other people around us what usually happens when we do that is we feel that if we are not sharing our best practices with other people we will always be very much in demand and other people will not whereas if we actually go ahead and start sharing these best practices with maybe 10 other people they will receive all these best practices and they will be open to share their own best practices of various other uh, tools techniques knowledge that we even don't know about we are unaware of what happens is we are able to in that way multiply the kind of skill set that we have multiply our success because we have shared our best practices with other people so does that sound practical does that sound like a nugget of wisdom shall we all do what this farmer has done let's do this let's try to share our best practices so that others also are happy they share much more and we are all productive and we all rise together thank you for watching stories with coach sujata please subscribe like and comment and don't forget listening to complete videos whenever you listen to me thank you so much for the energy that you're giving me and for more than 350 subscribers god bless please continue giving me this kind of support it peps me to do much more and share much more thank you bye bye hello welcome back to my channel stories with coach sujata a guru was in the middle of his spiritual discourse all his followers almost 300 people were listening to him in rapt attention suddenly the guru took out a 100 rupee note from his pocket and he showed it to everyone saying who wants this 100 rupee note now almost immediately all 300 hands went up saying we want it now he said okay will you still want it if i do this to it and he took the note and crumpled it it became a small ball of crumpled currency and he showed this crumpled 100 rupee note and said do you still want it immediately all the same hands went up again saying yes we do we do want that we want the bill we want the money he said okay what about now and he threw this crumpled uh, 100 rupee note onto the ground and trampled it with his foot he picked it up and said now what about now all the hands still were up everyone still wanted the 100 rupee note then he said what do you learn from this what is the lesson that i have tried to teach you today the lesson is in the current situation in the lockdown after the lockdown has been lifted because of the economic slowdown many people have become jobless many people are going through very severe pay cuts at work many people are in despair some people who have become jobless feel a deep sense of worthlessness saying that i was so and so i am not so and so anymore to all these people the guru sent this message that no matter what life may grind you life may crumple you life may trample upon you because of the kind of decisions that you may have taken because of your circumstances because of a, a global phenomena like a pandemic but then you are still worth every cent of the 
that currency you are still worth every bit every grain of whoever you are so in other words in very simple words who you are is not defined by your designation it is not defined by how many people know you it is not defined by what kind of clothes you wear it is not defined by the cars that you drive it is not defined by the wealth around you who you are will always remain who you actually are deep inside and your worth that worth will never change no matter what happens no matter what material is taken away from you no matter what kind of designations are taken away from you who you are is still who is loved by all those people around you you're still the same to your wife you're still the same to your children you're still the same to society to the elders to everyone so just remember that always remember that who you are will never change because of circumstances so just man up be happy be peaceful in whatever you do be happy and this time too shall pass thank you so much do like and subscribe to my channel hello welcome back to my youtube channel stories with coach sujata today's story is about a seed and a ceo strange isn't it so there was this very successful businessman highly respected in all the business circles and throughout his country he was known to have actually built up an entire empire with his own hands on his own effort now this businessman was becoming old and he decided to retire with that decision in his mind he called in a general body meeting Uh, for everyone in his company for all his company employees and then he told them about this decision and after that he had a board meeting a board meeting in which he invited the best talent of his organization his senior managers his assistant vice presidents his vice presidents you know all of them and to that particular population of people he made the announcement he said friends I'm ready to hang up my boots. So by next year, this time, I would have retired. And because I have to nominate the new CEO of my organization, I'd like to do it a little differently. I don't want one of my sons to become a CEO just because he's my son. Instead, I want to throw this challenge open to everyone. And with that, he said, "Okay. So all of you get a level playing field today and he gave each of them a seed yes you heard it right a seed and that seed would decide their fate he said now take this seed home plant it pot it give it water take care of it and exactly on this day the next year i will see these seeds i will examine them and whoever wins my appreciation for the way that he or she has taken care of this seed will become the new ceo of my organization so imagine what each employee would have thought all of them were very very excited and among all of these employees was one employee jim jim also was equally excited he was very happy he was thrilled to have been given such an opportunity to become the ceo of one of the best companies of the country so jim went back home very happy very excited told his wife everything they celebrated they cheered and then his wife got him a beautiful pot with soil with fertilizer so they potted the seed they planted the seed and they gave it fertilizers they took very good care of it a week passed two weeks passed and then three weeks and jim started hearing the other people 
in the room of a CEO, all of those people who were the senior managers and his colleagues, um, they started talking about their little saplings, their little seedlings that were coming out, that were sprouting out. Now, Jim continued watering his plants, but he kept waiting for that seed to germinate, that seed to develop, which never happened. 45 days, two months, three months, and Jim was really sad. He knew that he had killed his seed, but then he continued watering his seed just with the, 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 the small hope that the seed would indeed germinate. And meanwhile, at work, many of his colleagues kept talking about the beautiful plants that were coming out, the beautiful trees, um, uh, uh, the beautiful shrub that was actually developing out of their seeds. So with a very heavy heart, Jim continued watering his pot with the vain hope that the seed would germinate, even though his heart told him otherwise, his mind told him otherwise. So while that happened, a year completed itself and the meeting that everyone was waiting for very eagerly came upon them. So the CEO was eagerly waiting for all of his employees and the employees were so happy and thrilled to show the result of their progress to the CEO. Jim did not feel like going to work. In fact, he didn't want to take his bot with him. But his wife said, let's be honest, let's man up. Honesty is the best way. So Jim said, okay. And with a heavy heart and with dread in his heart, he took the empty pot to the CEO's meeting. Now the CEO looked around. There were so many pots, beautiful flowers in some, uh, in some pots, um, uh, beautiful uh, uh, colors um, of, uh, of green and yellow and maroon, beautiful colors in so many trees, in so many plants. And then his eyes stood to where Jim was actually standing with his pot. And his pot did not have anything in it. So the CEO asked the CFO to call him in. And Jim was summoned. So Jim was summoned in the presence of everyone else. And the CEO said, okay, what is this? I mean, I don't see a plant. What is this? So Jim was very worried. He was so scared. He was petrified that the CEO would fire him because he would not, he was not able to take care of even one seed. He wasn't able to grow a plant. Forget about taking care of an organization. Jim was really scared that even his own job would be removed. So then the CEO did something. He asked everyone except for Jim to take a seat, to be seated. And everyone was really thrilled inside saying, okay, now it's me, one contender less for the position. And, and, and with that, the CEO made the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with open arms and with a thunderous applause, your new CEO, Jim. Jim was stunned. And so were all the other colleagues. They just kept looking at the CEO blankly saying, Jim has failed. Which is when the CEO said, as you sow, so you reap. The day that I gave all of you the seeds, I was absolutely sure that I will not get any plant. I had given you boiled seeds. Only Jim had the honesty and the integrity to come back and tell me the result was a failure. So Jim is the CEO of an organization. So ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, the lesson that I learn, the lesson that all of us learn is that honesty pays. If we plant honesty, we reap trust, the trust of people around us. If you're not able to do something, we need to be honest about it. Many a time in corporate presentations, in, in maybe a meeting of very senior people, we, we, we tell these, these small white lies with the hope that people would not understand or would not know when 
we don't know something or that we don't know something a particular um, a particular piece of advice a particular uh, um, um, you know uh, a particular technology the usage of uh, of maybe a particular theory so we somewhere deep inside our heart there is this insecurity that okay what would the other people think about me if i say that i don't know but believe me one lie leads to another leads to another and soon we have this entire sw- spider's web you know that is all over the place and then we don't even remember which lie we had actually used in the first place so honesty my dear friends is definitely the best policy it may not pay us immediately but it has long term benefits so please do subscribe to my channel i would love to share many more incidents many more stories of whatever i have understood whatever i have learned whatever i have read do like subscribe and share my channel thank you so much from stories with coach sujatha bye bye have a wonderful day ahead hello and welcome back to my youtube channel coach trainer sujatha This story is a story of faith. Indra Dev, the god of gods. He was the king of all gods. He got very angry with a bunch of farmers one day. Indra Dev jo the, unhe kuch narazgi ho gayi uh, ek uh, ek uh, kisanon ke jhund se. To unhone ek din kaha ki bhai ab se 12 saal tak tum logon ko main koi barish nahi dunga. you will not see rain for the next 12 years so these poor farmers who were completely dependent on water on the water from rain were very upset were petrified they didn't know where to go so they went back to indradev and they prayed to him they begged for his mercy saying please give us some rain and then indradev said okay i will give you rain if the lord shiva plays his damru the minute lord shiva plays his damru there will be rain for you so these farmers were happy they went running to lord shiva and they said shivji if you play the damru we will get rain and we will have our crops we will be able, able to live but then by then um, god indra had already spoken to shiva and said shivji you should not give them you should not play the damru for them for the next 12 years so god shiva heard the king of gods and said okay i will play the damru but only after 12 years so the dejected demotivated farmers ye bechare kisan wapas apne ghar chale gaye aur saalon saal usi barish ki ye 12 saal complete hone ke liye wait karte rahe but there was one farmer among them who continued tilling his soil cleaning up the weeds Uh, you know applying the, or or putting uh, fertilizer in the soil and he kept sowing his seeds year after year all the other farmers laughed at him saying pagal ho kya i mean tumhe pata hai ki 12 saal ke baad hi barish hone wali hai indradev ne bola hai apne khud bola bhola shankar ne apne shivni shiv ji bhagwan ne ye baat boli hai ki bhai 12 saal ke baad hi barish hogi to tum kyun ye sab kaam kar rahe ho जाओ कोई और मजदूरी करो कोई और काम करो द फार्मर स्माइल्ड एट एवरी वन एंड सेड हाँ मैं दूसरा काम भी करूंगा क्योंकि मुझे मेरे खानदान का मेरे परिवार का पेट पालना है लेकिन मैं ये काम जो मेरा जो मेरा वजूद है जो मेरा अस्तित्व है जो मेरा एक्चुअल आइडेंटिटी है ये काम मैं नहीं छोड़ूंगा सो ही सेड यस आई नो दैट इट विल रेन ओनली आफ्टर ट्वेल्व ईयर्स बट देन बाय ट्वेल्व ईयर्स by the time it's 12 years i would have forgotten how to actually farm how to till the soil how to put uh, these fertilizers in the soil in the right quantity with the right techniques with the right tools i would have forgotten how to put seeds how to plant seeds for my harvest so i cannot stop sharpening my saw i cannot stop and give up on these skills these skills that will give me my daily bread and butter 12 years from now so yes i will do whatever it takes 
to ensure that my family has its food, its basic sustenance. But I will not give up on my basic techniques, on the most important skills that are my life skills. And he continued doing what he was doing. As fate would have it, Goddess Parvati overheard this farmer, understood and, and greatly admired his faith. His faith in his own skills, in his faith that, yes, it will rain someday or the other. His faith um, and his persistence in continuing with his life skills, continuing to sharpen his life skills and becoming better at them. And she went back to Goddess, uh, God uh, Shiva and said, you know what, look at that farmer. How beautifully and consistently he's practicing his skill, practicing his life skill and his art. He will not forget his art. His art will in fact become better. But I have doubts about you. Maybe you'll forget how to play the Dumbru after 12 years. Who knows? I mean, obviously, it is a musical instrument. If you don't play it after a particular while, maybe you will forget the t technique that you use in order to play your Dumbru. And hearing that, God Shiva was a little worried, a little concerned. And, see, and he said, okay, what will happen? And he was also very innocent. He would always listen to people around him. A gullible Bhola Shankar. So what he did was, okay, let me practice the Dabru for some time. And he started practicing his Dabru. And what happened when he started practicing his Dabru? There was rainfall. And that one farmer who had continued tilling his soil, pouring fertilizer and planting his seed got his bumper crop. So what are we talking about? We are saying that many of us in the lockdown, in this particular period in which we have um, limited, uh, limited availability of maybe resources, limited movement from the spaces that we live in, we are telling ourselves that, okay, what is the point of exercising? What is the point of uh, working on my skills? What is the point on sharpening the saw? Because I'm not going to use it in the near future. Maybe I lose my job. Maybe, you know, uh, there is an economic slowdown. So maybe we won't get many resources. Let me just preserve what I have and just sustain myself from day to day. Instead of that, let's be like the farmer. Let's persevere. Let's continuously hone those skills, sharpen the saw so that when divine providence has it and when the Lord Shiva plays his Damru, there would be rainfall and we would be equipped for it. We would have already sharpened our skill sets to such a level and in fact, we would have become multi-skilled at various things that we would be even more relevant when the lockdown ends. So let's do this together. Let's sharpen our skills. Let's constantly strive to do something different. Do something that's uncomfortable for us that we have not been able to do before this. Let us say that this is the time for us to become better at whatever we do. So let's do this together. All the best. And let's begin the journey. Do subscribe, like and share my channel and make it viral. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, productive day ahead. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome back to Stories with Coach Sujata. A group of frogs was moving from one place in the jungle to another place in the jungle because their pond was drying up. While they were doing that, suddenly two of the frogs fell into a very deep pit. The pit looked so deep from on top that it was almost bottomless. It looked bottomless to the other frogs. So all the other frogs were peering down this pit and asking their two companions to stop struggling. They said, stop jumping. Stop trying to get out of the pit. Stop trying to do all of this that will only lead to more and more pain for you. Accept your death. Accept it gracefully because there's no other way out. So both the frogs, without listening to their friends, kept trying to jump out of the pit. Such people, we see them even in real life. They're called naysayers. They're also called detractors. These are those people who try to stop us from achieving what we dream to achieve. They say, no, you shouldn't do this. No, it's not possible. Or in Hindi, they say, tum se nahi ho paega. Tum kyun ye sab try karte rehte ho? 
so so these are people who actually spread a lot of negativity and self doubt so that is exactly what was happening near the pit near the uh, mouth of the pit so these other frogs were standing there and constantly asking the two the, the two frogs inside the pit to stop jumping just to give up and accept their fate one of the frogs listened to them it became depressed and in fact jumped deeper to its own death the other frog though did not do so he kept jumping higher and higher and higher but he wouldn't even come halfway close to the entire length of the pit he would look up and he would see all his friends shouting and saying don't do this don't try to make it even more difficult for you you will face a lot of pain why don't you just accept your death gracefully but this frog did not give up and as divine ordinance would have it as you know as luck would have it and because of the sheer grit and determination that he had he was successfully able to jump out of that huge pit don't you feel good when you hear this and once he jumped out of the pit all the other frogs said how how was it possible it was like you were literally flying it was like you had these wings to fly out of the pit how did you do this and then the frog said but but i thought that all of you were cheering me up you were actually egging me on asking me not to give up you were all encouraging me to jump out of the pit and then the other frogs realized that this frog was partially deaf so he could not hear what was happening around him so what happened instead he thought that all his friends were in fact encouraging him to get out of the pit so the moral of the story my friends is do not pay heed to your detractors do not pay any heed to people who say that you cannot achieve it tumse nahi ho payega ye kyu kar rahe ho just go on pursue your dreams relentlessly and when you do it the harder you work the luckier you get and the more your self confidence will build the clearer your dream will be and the easier it will be for you to achieve those dreams so are you all with me here today because in real life we have a lot of such people who try to constantly pull us down pull us down with their little remarks with their sharp barbs with their criticism with their faces with the sarcasm in their voices in their tones of voice don't we all know such people so what do we do ignore such people such toxic people who try to pull you down are not worth living with but then sometimes you still have to live with them because of the kind of circumstances you have and more importantly because you don't want to give away that relationship so don't pay heed to the naysayers think that they're actually encouraging you like the other frogs were and keep leaping till you fly thank you so much for listening to stories with coach sujata do like subscribe and share with all your near and dear ones because this story actually may be of benefit to so many other people as well please spread the good word thank you so much have a wonderful day ahead Good morning. Welcome back to my channel, Trainer Coach Sujata. I'd like to share a psychological effect that is called the Pygmalion effect with you today. The Pygmalion effect is based on an ancient Greek story, the story of a sculptor named Pygmalion. Now, Pygmalion was very well known for his sculpting skills. He used to make beautiful marble statues. So one day, he started building a marble stat statue. that expressed his love for the feminine so it was his idea of the perfect feminine form or womanly form and he made this beautiful marble statue of a woman and lo and behold he fell in love with that statue because he believed that the statue actually had life so he was completely in love with her he named her galatea and he believed you know 
in in talking to her he would talk to her just as i would talk to anyone else we would talk to people who are in fact alive so he would talk to her in the morning wish her the time of the day uh, talk to her about the kind of food that he would like to make everything and the kind of belief that he had in the statue actually having life was so profound was so profound that the goddess venus the goddess of love turned the statue to life so galatia came to life and they lived happily ever after they got married and lived happily ever after so what does this story say the psychological effect that we're talking about the pigmalion effect says that our actions are based on the kind of expectations that we have from people and when we actually behave in a certain way because of our expectations for that person that person's performance is directly impacted by our behavior and our beliefs our expectations so we mean that if you know we we, we take it to a parent and a, a a child relationship if we take it to a teacher and a student relationship or an a, a manager and an employee based relationship what we expect from our employee what we expect expect from our child what we expect from our student we in fact manifest through our behavior towards him or her so if we expect that a child is a slow learner so he will not actually amount to anything great in life our behaviors our subconscious and conscious behaviors indicate that to this child to this student and the student will automatically rise up or fall down to these expectations so if we behave or we believe that our child our student is exceptional is very gifted is very different from the others and our behavior indicates that to these students automatically they rise up they say hey she believes in me my teacher my mother strongly believes that i can be a leader so let me see what i can do to be that leader i'm not talking about um, having overly optimistic expectations or blown uh, out of proportion expectations for our children or our students but i'm actually talking about the power of positive expectations so if we were to take this and talk about another story that that has deeply impacted me The story is of Thomas Alva Edison. When he was a child of six, six and a half, Alva Edison was given a letter by his school, a sealed envelope by his school, and was asked to give it to his mother. Now, Alva Edison went to his mother, Thomas went to his mother, little Thomas, and the mother started reading this letter. Thomas said, "Mama, why don't you read it loudly? Even I would like to hear what my school has to say about me." And the mother had tears in her eyes. and she read this out saying your child dear mrs edison your child thomas is such a genius is so gifted that we don't have a place for him our school is too small to house someone with such talent with such genius why don't you go ahead and homeschool him because maybe you can do a better job than we can thomas was so happy he said okay mama so they think that i'm such such a genius so let me prove them right and all of us know who thomas alva edison is so what happened this letter went into the archives of the house somewhere in the antique room and after the mother was gone many years after the mother was gone thomas alva edison came across the letter and when he read it he cried continuously what was written in the letter actually was dear mrs edison your child thomas is adult he's mentally retarded we will not be able to instruct him he is hereby expelled from the school and that was when thomas thought alva edison thomas alva edison thought and wrote this down in his diary saying thomas alva edison was an adult child of a hero mother who transformed him into what he is today a genius that the world looks up to so this is the power 
of our expectations for our children, for our students, for people around us, for our spouses, for our employees in a manager, a manager and employee relationship. So how do we manifest this in a way that the person actually can see that we think positively, we expect a lot from them? One, through the language that we use. Two, through our body language when we are speaking to that person. Three, by stating our expectations clearly and positively. In these three steps, we can successfully ensure that we send the right expectations and we are setting our children, our students, and our spouses, our employees, anyone who's in a relationship with us, we are setting them up for success. So this is the Pygmalion Effect. Have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead. Please try and use this Pygmalion effect in your own life and see how it manifests in greatness for people around you. Have a wonderful day. Do subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye. A very good morning to everyone. Wish you all a happy and auspicious Mahashivratri. On this day, I would like to share a very nice story that I heard from a colleague, an ex-colleague, uh, who is also a friend. And it stayed with me for the kind of learnings I got out of it. Now, this is the story of the rock and the sculptor. Yani ke patthar aur shilpkar ki khani hai ye. Wo aisa shilpkar tha who was extremely well known, very famous uh, for the kind of magic that he had in his hands. If he had his tools in his hands, he would be able to breathe life into inanimate objects like stones. So one day he was in a very creative mood, in a creative bent of mind. And he started searching for the right stone. Ek patthar dikha unko, sahi size and sahi, uh, sahi look wala patthar. Aur unhone apne ozaar liye, he took his tools and he started chiseling. Now this rock had life. All these rocks, because this was an ancient story, this rock started feeling the pain. The pain of the chisel and the hammer that the sculptor had in his hand. So because of the pain, the rock started shouting, screaming in agony, saying, Bohut dard de raha hai. Aap kya kar rahe ho ye? Now then the sculptor said, Aap, aap bas thoda dheeraj rakho. Please wait for some time. I have something very great in store for you. Something great in store for you that will change your life, that will transform your life. You won't know what, what it is till I actually make this. So please trust me. A little pain. Endure a little pain. Now this rock, this stone felt bad. It said, no, I don't have to. I choose not to change. I would like to be the way I am. I'm a rock. I'm happy being a rock. I'm happy being a stone. Now, please leave me alone. Now, the sculptor was a gentleman. So the sculptor said, okay, I respect your wishes. And he left the stone alone. And right down the path, he found a similar stone. And he started doing his job again. Because he was in a creative mood, he had to create something wonderful. He had a great idea. Now, again, this rock, this new stone that he started chiseling on, felt the pain. It was a lot of pain having a hammer uh, and a chisel uh, work on you, on your body, does give you pain. So even this stone said, what are you doing? I'm in a lot of pain. Please stop what you're doing. Now then this sculptor said the same thing. He said, Aapke liye maine bohut acha socha hai. Something great is bound to happen. It will take a little pain, but this change will transform you. Do you trust me? Now this stone thought, it thought deeply and said, okay, I trust you. I will go through the change. I will go through the pain. And the sculptor continued chiseling with his tools. Unke ozar ke saath, unhone kaam continue kiya, jari rakha. Aur kya hua? Do, teen din ke baad, is sculptor ne, is shilpkar ne, ek bohut hi badhiya sa, ek shivling bana diya, is patthar mein se. Aur is Shivling ko, is shivling mein itni, itni ek beauty thi. It was such a beautiful shivling. 
and there was so much of positivity around the shivling that people from all over the place from different villages from all over town started coming to actually see the shivling is shivling ke darshan ke liye bahut sare log alag alag gaon se alag alag jagahon se aane lage aur tab kya hua tab unhone socha ki chalo itna itna sundar shivling hai chalo iske liye mandir banaya jaye and what did all of these people do the villagers the people of the town who loved this the beauty of this shivling started constructing a nice a beautiful wall around the shivling there was a beautiful path that they created with the same kind of stones that were available in the same place and they made this beautiful shivling the center of the garbhagriha and they made a wall around it they made a beautiful path leading towards it and people started coming and worshiping the shivling they would come with great uh, great offerings badi badi bhent leke aane lage log um, sundar phool uh, laddu uh, doodh uh, malai uh, nariyal pani itni alag alag cheeze laane lage is shivling shi, shivling ko wo uh, bhent dene ke liye aur is shivling ki upasna karne ke liye so many people started coming in order to get the darshan to take the darshan of this great shivling and as luck would have it the other stone a stone the first stone that did not want to have any change on itself it did not want to endure any change or any pain that stone was also taken by force and it was made one of the stones of the wall the wall that would lead that was a part of the entrance to this shivling and while people would walk they would kick it they would trample on it their their feet uh, would touch it and it would keep feeling the pain and then it would think it would keep saying okay had i just waited for some time had i endured the painful change i would have been in this place i was the first to get there i was the first choice of the sculptor so this beautiful story has two learnings for me one the learning that that change is painful initially change is painful for example if uh, if there is a healthy change that we would like to make in our lifestyle it is painful because we are used to so many oily deep fried and tasty things around us this change is a little painful but it is extremely beneficial and it is good for us in the long run so any change even though it starts with a painful process if we trust the almighty if we trust our instincts and continue with the change it does give us a lot of benefit sometimes life transforming benefits that's the first learning the second learning is success is a choice we choose to succeed we choose to give up our old habits that may not be productive we choose to adapt to new habits that may be very difficult initially but that will actually give us a lot of benefits in our lifetime um this this is something these two learnings are something that i definitely wanted to share with all of you because i thought that this story the lock the rock and the sculptor i'm sorry the rock and the sculptor would actually help you think of how you can also trust the almighty and maybe accept certain changes that are inevitable but that are very beneficial that may be painful that may be very beneficial for your lives have a wonderful mahashivratri om namah shivaya morning welcome back to my channel um, a channel in which um, i'm attempting to create to share uh, to express the little that i have uh, been able to gather in uh, these years of experience both in life and uh, in the corporate training and and learning and development world Um in 1978 uh, an author named Lauren Isley published an essay called The Star Thrower. Um it this this particular essay has had a profound impact on me. So I would love to share it. It has been retold many times in many places uh, in the YouTube elsewhere everywhere but this is my take on it. Um this story recounts a beach walk in which uh, the narrator is actually walking on a beach 
it's a beautiful moonlit night and there are millions and millions of starfish on the on the shore to shore pe millions and millions jo hai starfish hai chote se sea animals hote hain aise star shape ke bachchon ko bahut hi pasand hai unke fairy tales mein hum starfish ki baat karte hain bachchon ke toys bhi hote hain starfish ke to aise jo live starfish hain there were millions of starfish on the shore and the narrator was surprised to see a, a young boy um, searching in these starfish searching desperately searching with a lot of keen interest in these starfish he was picking up some of these starfish that were alive and he was throwing them back into the sea so the author was intrigued he was interested his interest was piqued so he went and met the boy and said boy what are you doing what are you doing at first i thought that you were maybe taking these starfish and um, maybe you were taking them home but now i see that you're actually throwing them back into the sea so why are you doing this the little boy without stopping continued picking up starfish and throwing them back into the sea he would not touch the uh, he would not touch the dead ones he would actually pick up the live ones and throw them back into the sea and the ocean the forgiving ocean would take these live starfish back and they would continue living so what he was trying to do was to ensure that he would give life to those starfish agar starfish usi shore mein reh jate hain to they actually breathe with their skin wo apne skin se breathe karte hain to once the skin dries out they are not able to breathe anymore so ye bachcha chhota sa kya kar raha tha he was searching for those starfish jo jeevit the un starfish ko utha raha tha and he was throwing them back into the ocean so this man being the cynic that he was all of us become cynical after a particular age after lots of experiences disappointments after putting in a lot in a lot of effort and seeing that maybe we're not getting enough results so so this man says okay um don't be a fool don't kid yourself you won't be able to make too much of a difference see the shore is full of millions of starfish how many starfish will you, will you be able to actually save don't do this i mean don't waste your time go ahead go ahead play you know build a sand castle go back home but ye bachcha unki baat sun ke uh unki taraf dekh ke ek choti si hansi hans ke wo phir aur ek starfish ko ek jeevit starfish ko uthata hai and he throws the starfish back into the sea and says i know maybe i will not be able to make a difference to all of them but i have made a difference to that one that one starfish so this is a great great learning for us when it comes to positive thinking it's a great learning for us uh, when it comes to daily motivation bahut baar aisa hota hai ab dekhiye choti choti cheezon ke bare mein bhi even in our real life um if uh, uh, supposing something as simple as weight loss i'm 20 kgs overweight i have to put down all this weight i have to shed all of this how is that possible i mean 20 kgs who am i kidding let me just give up a chhod dete hain in sab cheezon ko waise bhi main achhi lag rahi hu yeah something as simple as okay excel microsoft excel i'm 65 years old how can i learn microsoft excel now I, there are so many things that i know how to do better than microsoft excel i don't need microsoft excel aisi choti choti cheeze hain there are million and one things you know where we think okay let's not try something that is humongous that is a huge huge effort that we need to put in and we don't do it at all we don't move forward an inch by saying okay this is too tough for me let me not even think about it maybe i should not think about this i should i should think about a different goal so this this small story this wonderfully poignant story this this interesting story this this inspiring story actually tells us that hey that one starfish has lived because of you that one small piece of trash that you have actually picked up and thrown into the garbage bin has made the world a better place that one small drop of the ocean that you that you have helped conserve that one small leaking tap in your kitchen or in your bathroom that you have helped repair has made a difference to the world your single small step has actually created the right momentum has started has initiated the right momentum for you to move into the right direction 
फॉर यू टू सेव द वर्ल्ड समडे सो बूंद बूंद से जरूर सागर बनता है वो एक घंटे का जो एक्सरसाइज आपने किया है पहली बार ही सही विल हेल्प यू हैज मूव यू इन द राइट डायरेक्शन विल क्रिएट दैट दैट ग्रेट पॉजिटिव एनर्जी इन साइड यू दैट सेज दैट यू नो एवरी सिंगल एफर्ट हैज द पोटेंशियल टू क्रिएट अ ह्यूज पॉजिटिव डिफरेंस इन द वर्ल्ड सो वेलकम टू द स्टार थ्रो अ लेट इज नॉट साइलेंट दैट स्मॉल होपफुल स्टार थ्रो अर इन आर माइंड दैट सेज येस मे बी आई कैन मेक अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ डिफरेंस मैं सही मैं करो वील लेट्स कन्वर्ट मैं क्या कर सकती हूँ एम के के एच टू मैं कुछ कर सकती हूँ एम के के एच हैव अ वंडरफुल वंडरफुल डे है लेट्स मीट अगेन नेक्स्ट वीक थैंक यू सो मच फॉर लिसनिंग टू मी गॉड ब्लेस प्लीज लाइक subscribe and share and build this small hope that i have step by step subscription by subscription thank you so welcome back to my channel stories with coach sujatha today's story is a corporate story a story that has a manager ramesh and his subordinate suresh they were completely opposite personalities ramesh was direct you know decisive dynamic very dominant also so many a times his team members were a little um, intimidated by his presence in the team whereas suresh was completely different he was very hard working and industrious but he was a very peace loving person he was easy going peace loving always had a smile for everyone and majorly used to avoid conflict of any kind so he was the peacemaker of the team so what would happen was for small things um you know uh, for maybe uh, in in brainstorming sessions or during uh, product update meetings or during awareness sessions any of these sessions if and when suresh would have a point ramesh would almost immediately make his own point known and there were such you know various instances that were building up the resentment that uh, that ramesh had for suresh that suresh had for ramesh so there was this conflict and conflicting situation that was building up it was building the tension in, in the office environment in that particular team and it was directly affecting the kind of quality that the team was actually producing so this does happen in in many other workplaces this also happens in a regular in a normal you know personal relationship that we may have with someone so what are we talking about we are talking about conflict management and the moral of the story was that the employee that hard working employee actually quit the organization so let's not come to a situation where such a thing happens attrition actually happens instead let's try to see how we can manage welcome mitigate this conflict so let me tell you what works for me and how i've helped a lot of people in my own coaching at that point um, or through training uh, is that when there is a conflicting situation do this this one step follow this one step and that step is putting the fish on the table think of that one conflict that one difference of opinion that you have with your colleague or with your spouse as a fish okay a dead fish a fish that you get from the market what happens to the fish if you actually put it under the table and forget about it for one day and the smell is bad the third day the smell is i mean it's a stench it's unbearable and the the fish has uh, gotten i mean it is rotten and it's it's terrible it can also cause infection in the household so this is exactly what conflict or long standing conflict resentment can do to both your professional and your personal relationships so what do you do put the fish on the table it can be very difficult it's easier said than done putting the fish on the tra- table sitting you know uh, in front of one another or side by side and trying to resolve a conflict but that's the best way to overcome any particular conflicting situation most times conflict happens because of a difference of opinion or a difference of perception of what i see versus what you see so at that point one tip for everyone that will work beautifully that has worked really well for me is you know stopping ourselves for a minute and saying okay i have a goal i have a goal that both of us have to reach we have to resolve this that's the common goal building a common goal and then saying okay now i will hold my horses let's do a twizy twizy 
Okay? Let's do a twisey, tweezy. Twisey means the way you see it. Tweezy means the way I see it. So I will say, I'm going to hold my horses. I may be the boss. I may be the subordinate. I may be the wife. I may be the husband. I may be anyone in this relationship. But I will hold my horses because that's what I can control. My own reaction, right? My own response. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to hold my horses for a minute. And let me see the way you see it. You describe the situation. You describe why you differ from my point of view. What do you do? And you listen without judgment. The second step that I follow, listen without judgment. Listen without that self-doc in my mind saying, okay, now he's going to say this. So let me respond like this. Now she's going to say this. Let me rebut that like this. It's me. It's my ego. Put that aside and say, okay, let me listen completely without judgment, without my own mind talk. These two steps, believe me, my friends, can resolve any crisis, any conflict, any conflict, because that way the other person starts feeling good. The other person starts appreciating the fact that we are actually willing to hold our own ego, to you know push our own ego down and actually listen to the other one. So let's try and do this, right? So conflict management, simple 101 is three steps, put the fish on the table, two, the way you see it first, the way I see it later, Three, suspend our own judgment. Listen without judgment. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel for many more such stories. Let's do this together. Let's all rise. Thank you. Bye-bye.